Hey everybody, Chris here with Funny Little Honey Farm. Uh, it's Sunday, and I think the next video we're supposed to do, I was supposed to take you guys down into the basement and show you the uh, tent, the grow tent. But we're going to do that. I'm still going to do that video. I think I'm going to do it tonight. My nose itches, sorry. Uh, we're going to do it tonight probably, but for right now, it's kind of a warm day, and I need to go outside and give the bees some sugar water. I need to go and check on them, so... I figured I'd take you guys down there with me because it'd be an interesting thing for you to just check it out. Are the bees alive? Um, I looked from the front window. I looked down. Actually, let's walk out there. But uh, Before I do, I just want to flip something around. I want to show you one thing because I talked before about hive tools. And I said, you know, there's multiple hive tools if you watched my video before. And I couldn't find my other one. Uh, but I'm going to show you the two tools that I have real quick and I'm going to tell you the one that I'm taking down to the yard with me uh, today that I always take with me because I like one of these tools better than the other so I'm going to show you that real quick we're going to flip the camera around maybe no I can't I forgot I can't flip the camera around while I'm recording so we're going to flip it around and be right back all right so these are the two hive tools that I have there might be a couple of other different kinds but for me, this is the tool that I started with, and I learned how to use the little J-hook tool, I like to call it. Uh, I like to get that tool down in, and I like to use it to kind of pick things up. You know, I love the hook on the bottom of this tool. Um, that's really why I prefer that tool over this tool. Now, you might like this tool. I call this the paint tool. Um, I don't know what they're really called, but I, I kind of remember when I was younger, these painters used to have things like this. And the premise of this tool is kind of has a hook on it, but it's not the J-hook like that one. You would kind of go under the hole, you know, when you want to pry something up, you would have to use the whole thing to pry it up. So for me personally, I like this tool. I think you can tell it's more, it's dirtier than this one. So uh, that's the tool I prefer. All right, so we're going to go over here. Actually, there's a little more bees than I thought there would be, but I'd be happier seeing a lot more coming and going from that. <clears throat> Just take a look coming out see very many bees coming back right now so here's one one's coming in up oh, and she's bringing in pollen which is a very good sign if you saw that now oh, she's got pollen so everybody coming back is bringing pollen with them beekeepers like to call that pollen pants looks like they're wearing leggings right she didn't have very much on her All right, I'm feeling pretty good that, oh man, do you see all the pollen on her? I still, man, after five years, I still get excited seeing a hive survive a winter. Um, and this is, for, I mean, I've seen this hive survive the winter. I mean, but we had a really, whole, really cold uh, couple days here and where it was warm last week. And then we had some cold, oh, look, I don't know if you noticed that real quick, but they're bringing out dead bodies. Uh, let's look down here on the bottom. And there are some bees that froze. I don't know if you can see that. But they're bringing them out. Look here, right here. She's, they're, they're trying to bring them out. The bodies that have died, they just bring them out. They drop them on the ground. I don't know if it's f focusing or not. I hope it is. I'm going to get better equipment, I promise. Right? You can support me by uh, hitting the like button down below. And always by buying my honey. Because really, I put all of my honey money and all the money I'm trying to make off of this. If I make any money. Uh, back into more hives really so yeah they're uh they're doing what they need to do they're bringing out the dead bodies i could get in there in the system probably but i'm not going to mess with them too much like i said it's a little cold we are going to go and give them some sugar though because maybe they're hungry right and maybe they didn't maybe they've eaten all the honey that they stored up because we steal a lot from them right so let's go in here and take a look I don't know what you guys are going to see. We're going to try to do it one handed and kind of show you, but we're going to take the lid off and look inside here. All right. Look down. We got some dead bees on the top. This is an inner cover, by the way. Uh, that's called a communication hole. 
I didn't know that before last week. I just called it a hole in the top of the inner cover, but apparently there's a name for it called an inner, a communication hole in some circles. So there you have that. So we're going to bust out the uh, hive tool here, right? We got it right here. And we're going to kind of go under here and kind of pop that open. We don't want to crack it too much. We want to be very careful. We don't want to disturb them too much. Uh, I'm not going to do a full inspection, but I want to see where the bees are, right? So I'm going to crack it open. Uh, I'm not using smoke, but I am wearing my veil because it takes one sting in the eye to go blind, they say, and I'm not trying to go blind right now. All right, back to the entrance. So we're going to pop it open, grab it with my hand, raise it up. Oh, there's a lot of bees in there. I like to see that, and they're spread out. They're not in a cluster. All right, so now I want to know how far down they are in the box. So we'll close this back up. Now I'm going to pop this box right here, and I'm going to lift it up. We'll break the seal because they've propolized everything and it's not too bad I have been in these before when it was when it wasn't so uh, when it wasn't so cold I did pop them so I've already broken the seal that they've propolized and we'll raise this hive up without knocking the whole thing down wow it's heavy it's heavy as heck man I can barely do it with one on hold on one second wow they've got plenty of honey in here okay I guarantee it I'm going to feed them, but they got plenty of honey in that. And they're already making more wax, so what might I got to do here? I got to do some work to this. So I need more warm days. Please, can I get some warm days so I can work these bees? So I'm going to go ahead. Oh, they're flying out of the lid now. Now they're bumping me on the hand. They don't like me uh, opening the box up. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on top like I said I was going to do, right? But it's off. It's not covering. It's not over top of the hole. But they can come up the hole and they can go in there, and get the sugar, and take it back down there and feed each other if they want to, right? So now I'm like, well, I can't leave this open, right? So what do we do next? I'm going to try to take one of these boxes. All right, we're back. Are we recording? Yes, we are. So I went up to the garage and I grabbed this other hive body. Another burgundy one. I don't need this. They don't need this wax in there, so I'm gonna go ahead and scrape that off. That's gonna go into my wax pile to wax to melt down. Uh, see this? Hot, see what happens here? Uh, I was gonna clean this hive up a little bit because this propolis I want to keep, but I'm gonna clean it up real quick right now yeah, because we're gonna use it. But actually, I don't have to because we're not putting frames in this, so I'm not gonna clean it up right now. We're gonna leave this right there like that. This hive has been frozen already and it's come out of the freezer, so I don't have to worry about any sort of contamination. Uh, but I like to freeze all my stuff before I scrape my propolis. So, uh, and I like to do that stuff outside, and it really just hasn't been warm enough for me to do it outside. So, we're going to do it in a couple of weeks here. So, let's put the lid back on these bees so that they can come out here and eat on this sugar if they want to. They're not going to like this, but I got to tap this over. push it I feel like sometimes if I end up pushing something and it breaks free I end up knocking things over so tap on your beehive at risk people um, so we're gonna put this over here all right on top of the inner cover right and then we're gonna put our outer cover right on top of that and these bees will start coming out of there and I'm gonna come down later on today and check and make sure that thing's not leaking but so far so good and it is leaning, so I guess all y'all know that you're supposed to put your beehives leaning forward, right? So that if there any water does get in there, and you don't have a uh, you don't have a screen bottom like I do, it's going to run forward, right? So that's a little too much lean on that, and that's because my hive stand's coming down, and we got brand new wood up in the garage to make a new stand. And there's another project that I got to do, and I'm going to try to film it all because I want you guys to see it. Uh, I just want you all along for the journey. It's kind of helping me. Maybe it'll help you. I know for me watching this guy Russ uh, over at the uh, Happy Colorado Homestead, I know I get a little bit of therapy watching him. So uh, he's funny, cracks me up. So thank you, Russ. Appreciate that. Maybe we'll walk around the beehives. We'll come over here. We'll take a look. One last little look at it before we go up. Everybody's looking at me driving up and down the road going, what a fool. What is that fool out there doing? He's got the camera and the big mic and 
Please, I gotta get into the woods soon. They're right over there. I could just run and go live in there, I reckon, but I don't know. All right, look, they're still pulling out bodies. That's a good job, girls. Clean that stuff up. Make me some honey this year. Put this box on here, right? I want no space in there. All right, there you have it. I wanted to show you guys, the sun came out. The bees came out. We were out here earlier, they uh, barely have uh, any of them flying around. But uh, they got warmed up now and they've decided to all come out and uh, go to the bathroom. And some of them's coming back with some pollen, like you see. So I wanted you to see that we do have some activity down here and this hive is actually doing pretty well, except for it's falling apart. You can kind of see right here. You see this little thing right here? That's, this is called a uh, box joint. And if you see all these beehives, that little piece right there on all these is bowed out. Not on the yellow one, but all my burgundies, right? I'm not sure what that, if that's heat or what that is, but or I, do, I will say I use my burgundy. That was my first hive. I've always had bees in it. Uh, it's been the strongest one. As you can see, it's still the one that's alive, and they're pulling dead bees out of there. But that box joint on that cut is very crappy in my opinion. And I have some new hives that have a better cut on that and I'll show you about that later. But there's that angle, I don't like that. Because we're pulling against these hives all the time. We're going this way and that way uh, to get these frames out. And as you're doing that, all you're doing is you're widening that out. Bees see that gap, they want to propolize it. Uh, gets a little bit wider, they propolize it again until eventually that's just full of propolis and pushed out. And it's not a big, it's, it's frustrating. So. Get off my shoulder, B, please. 